Hi, and welcome to part three of this PowerShell tutorial series based around commandlets for the event viewer. So in the last two videos, we've seen get event log in the first video and then get win event in the second video. And in the second video, we mostly focused around the XML filtering and the XPath filtering. So in this last video for this series of really getting to know these commandlets, we're going to be looking at the filtering by hash table for the get win event commandlet. So we're going to be building out a very similar um, query to the ones that we've seen in the past, just so we can actually uh, just recreate the same filter all three different ways, and then giving you guys the ability to pick which one is best for you and also best in the scenario that you're trying to figure out or um, just kind of do the least amount of scripting possible for the result that you would want to get. Um, Cause there's really no point in doing XPath if all you really want to do is just do a very, very simple filter. Uh, XML might be a lot easier um, or the hash table. If you prefer hash tables might be um, even easier for you guys. So let's go ahead and let's get started by first creating a variable called filter. And we are going to create this as a hash table. So as we know, it is just an at symbol and then open and close curly brackets. And we're just going to make some space in here. And now that we have our filter, we are also going to do our get win event. And then in here, we're going to put the parameter of filter hash table and we are going to put our filter in here. Now we aren't assigning this to a variable just yet. So I just want to show you guys um, how this kind of works. So right now, if we execute this, nothing will work because we are not specifying even the log that we want. So let's go ahead and let's do a log name up here in the filter. And we're going to set that equal to security. So once we have that in there, we are going to see that we're getting all of our security events. Uh, so very, very similarly. Um, to this where we actually just do the log name security or in here where we do the XML, uh, we have the path here for security. So very, very similar already. And then what we want to make sure that we do is we always want to grab these, um, these win, uh, Microsoft windows security auditing events. Uh, so in here, so this is the provider name. So for the hash table here, that is just going to be provider name. And then we're going to make that equal to single quote, oops, single quote. And let's just copy this again. Perfect. And we're going to make that equal to Microsoft Windows security auditing. And then we know that the event ID that we need is going to be 4625. Now in the hash table filter, it is actually not considered a event ID, uh, but all we're actually going to be looking for is just the word ID. So as we can see here in our results, we get just ID. So let's do ID equals single quote, single quote. And then inside of that, we're going to put four, six, two, five. So if we run all of this now, we only get our failed login attempts. And as you can see, we get all of them. Uh, for the last couple days here. Um, so there's no time filtering yet on these. So to do the time filtering, we are going to have to do a start time. And then we're going to make that equal to our dollar sign, open and close parentheses, and do a get date inside of there. And then a dot add hours, and then a minus one to get us the last hour. So right now, if I do this, we aren't going to get anything. So let me go ahead and send some events here. So we can actually get some failed logins. All right, so that should be good. So now if we run this, here we are. So now we can see here it is the 22nd of January and it's just afternoon and we can see that we have six failed logins now. So let's go ahead and let's assign this to the variable called events. 
And now we can actually go ahead and we could go into our scripts that we had yesterday um, or the other day, I should say, not yesterday. Um, but we could go ahead and we could just grab all of these, all of this code here that we used to do, uh, which was creating a log variable and then going through the event and grabbing the specific properties that we wanted. And then we group them by the username. So if we actually run this once again, we can actually see that we get very, very much the same results, um, but doing this filter by hash table. Now, there are a little bit of limitations to the filter by hash table, but there are also some quite some advantages that are a little bit easier to do by hash table. So let's say we only wanted to do um, events between certain times. The hash table, we could easily do a end time as well. So uh, what we could do here is we could do get date um, and then we could do a, a year. Let's do 2022 and then the date. Let's do um, 17th. I'm going to want to get all the events that just weren't today. Um, so let's do the date, the 17th, and then the month. We're going to do the first. And then for the start time, we're going to do... Um, year is going to be 2022. Oh, actually, date is going to be the 17th month is going to be one. And then the end date, we're just going to put that to 21st. So now if we do this, I think we should in theory get let me just see what this actually equals out to be. Uh, January 1st, that oh actually I selected the wrong this should be day and not date. So once we have that figured out here, let's go ahead and let's select everything. So here we are. So now if I just look at the log events, so here's all the logs uh, that we have. And now we don't have the time uh, of these, so we wouldn't actually know if this query actually worked. So let's go ahead and let's just add this in here into our log event, our log entry, I should say. So let's do a add member at the top. Our input object is going to be a log entry because we are inserting into our log entry. Our member type is going to be a note property. Our name is going to be time. And then our value is going to be event because our for each loop is going through the event. And then in here, there should be a time created. So that should be good. So let's go ahead and let's just remove this group object and let's see what this looks like now. So here we are. So we're seeing a whole bunch in the 17th here and then a bunch on the 19th. And that's it. But now if we just do um, the 17th to the 18th, we can see that we only get the 17th. Now, if we wanted to get all the way to today, we could put the end date as the 23rd. And let's see what that looks like. So we can see that we see all the 17th here. Give me one second. All the 17th, the 19th, and the 22nd comes up as well. So um, the filter hash table is definitely very useful. I would say the filter hash table is probably the easiest for doing a start and end time if you want to look at a specific time. Um, and then the XPath is very, very useful if you have... Um, the need to specify a user. Now the hash table, you can specify a user, but that will only work on versions of PowerShell six and up. So right now I'm still currently using for these videos, PowerShell 5.2, um, but I will be doing a video very soon on how to install PowerShell seven. And then after that video, we will be using PowerShell 7.2. I believe that they're at now and we'll be using that from then end. Um, but the filter hash table does have some additional filtering options. 
in PowerShell 6. And I will actually post a link to that documentation because in PowerShell 6 and later, you would actually be able to do filtering on this target username and a hash table, which would really make XPath and hash table pretty identical uh, in terms of flexibility. And I would say that the hash table is a little bit easier uh, to write because there's just not as much of a learning curve as learning another query language. Um, and then the XML is very, very easy. If you don't have anything very specific, you just want to look for a specific type of event um, for like the last hour or something. It's very, very easy. You go into event viewer, you kind of create your filter in event viewer, and then just copy paste that XML directly into your PowerShell. And then the get event log is very useful. If you just have a very basic, um, query. Now, the only thing about event log is I believe it is actually, uh, deprecated at this point. Um, so I definitely wouldn't recommend using event log. I would always recommend using win event um, in any of these ways. Uh, one, they're a lot faster and they're just a lot more flexible in what you can get out of them. Uh, and I know that they are still around. I don't know if get event log. I'm using Windows Server 2019 on or 2016 on this. Uh, so on 2016, it's definitely still around. I don't know about on 2019. I believe it still is, but I believe they're trying to get away from it. Uh, I could be wrong on that, but that would be my event viewer uh, overview of all the different commandlets. We'll be doing some projects that will actually integrate some of these scripts later on. So definitely be on the lookout for those. And we might actually integrate some REST PS in that as well. So if you guys liked this video, leave a like and a comment down below and please subscribe and hit that notification bell to be notified when that next video comes out. And I will see you on the next video.